Tick-tock, tick-tock goes the clock. Anyway, this is a coding challenge where I am going to make a very simple, very basic clock in P5.js. Why am I doing this? Well, if you are beginning to learn about programming and learn about graphics and animation, a great exercise that you can do that can really, you can really express your creativity with is invent a new way of uh, showing time. <laughs> make, make a clock in whatever imaginative, crazy way has never been done before, um, and it's really easy to get the time information with P5.js, and then it's just up to you to figure out what to draw based on that time information. Now, the inspiration for this idea comes from, that was a very loud squeak, um, John Maida's 12 o'clocks. So John Maida, this is a project from 1996 to 97, uh, made in classic Mac, uh, uh, for classic Mac, you can see here are uh, examples of John Maida's uh, 12 clocks. Um, and these were, this, this documentation page was created by Golan Levin, who, as for his course at Carnegie Mellon University, um, oh, that's from last year, <laughs> uh, maybe uh, um, has an assignment which is to uh, create your own clock. And so here's an example clock made in P5.js, a template. And you can see this is what I'm talking about. I would like to do something like this, which just shows you the mechanics of how you get the hour, the minute, the second, and draw something based on those. And uh, a temp template that you could use, and I hope that making this video will inspire a world of so many clocks that I could never possibly imagine. And I can't wait to see all the clocks that people are gonna make after watching this video. And I will try to come back and make more. Ah, I wanna show you, if you're looking for more inspiration, I gotta get to making the clock. Um, this is a collection of clocks made by um, Alka, a loyal viewer of the coding train. And there's some wonderful ones. This is one of my, this is a really nice one, the particle clock. We'll just look at this where we can see, like, look at this, these are particles. So this is actually having particles fly around and end up at, uh, with the actual numbers of the time. I'm gonna try to draw something based on time. So, okay. I now have some empty code and I'm ready to start programming the clock. So there's two things I wanna talk about before I start writing some code. Number one is, how do I get the time information? So this is actually one of the things that P5 does for you. I mean, it's just wrapping native JavaScript file functions that are part of the browser for getting the current time based on your computer's clock. Um, and uh, if I go to the P5 reference, we can see those under time and date. So I can get the day, the hour, the minute, the month, the second, and the year. I'm just gonna use hour, minute, I'm just gonna use, and second. <laughs> I knew it was with three. Hour, minute, and second. Millis is a function that gives you the number of milliseconds that have passed since the sketch started. And this can be used for timers and keeping track of things and syncing an animation to a clock. And it's interesting and useful, but I'm gonna actually just pull, and I'm not gonna do like, you know, fractionals of a second. I'm just gonna pull uh, hour, minute, and second from, uh, from P5. So let's actually really quickly just like spin up a digital clock. So I'm gonna say, uh, let hour equal hours, let minute equal minutes, I think this is right, let second equal seconds, were those the name of the functions? Hour, minute, second, boy, this is, so this is a terrible idea that I just did, hour, <laughs> minute, second, I'm gonna call this hr for owl, mn for minute, and sc for second. I really should come up with better variable names than that, that's what I'm gonna do right now. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna say fill 255, no stroke, and then I'm gonna say text uh, hour plus colon plus minute plus colon plus second, and I'm gonna put that at 10 comma 200. So let's see if this works. We have a really quickly, there we go. We have our clock, right? It is now, 608 and 28, 29, 30 seconds. Is that the right time? Oh my God, I'm late. I'm so late at 608. That's fine, I'm gonna keep going with this coding challenge and I'll, I'll leave when I'm done. Um, this is good actually to do it when I'm supposed to be somewhere that I have the coding challenge that's telling me the time. So there's no zero there, so I need to think about number formatting and I, you know, there's all sorts of interesting things I could do for designing, making a digital clock. I'm leaving all of the creative ideas to you, but what I wanna do is visualize the time. So I think my idea to do something rather simple, but it's a little bit more interesting than just bars, is I'm gonna use arcs. 
So this is what the ellipse function does in P5. The ellipse function draws an ellipse or a circle at a given x, y according to some width and according to some height. And the width and height can be the same because you're going to get that just as a diameter if it's a perfect circle. So I'm actually just going to have an ellipse at an x, y with a particular diameter. Okay? What the arc function does is exactly the same thing. It draws an ellipse at a given x, y with a given diameter. However, in addition to the x, y, the diameter, width and height, I can give a start angle and an end angle. Meaning I can say draw this arc from 0 to 180 degrees. So I only see this part of the, of the circle. So let's see how that works. And let's try to draw. Just to see this in action, I'm going to get rid of the text. Now I don't need that anymore. I can use that for debugging. I'm going to draw an ellipse at 200, 200. I'm going to say stroke weight 4, no fill. And I'm going to give it a, a diameter of, let's just say, 200 right now. Let's, yeah, no, let's say 300. Uh, and let's take a look at that. Oh, and I need to say uh, stroke 255. So there's my ellipse, right? That's the full ellipse. Now what I want to do is I want to draw an arc. So I'm going to say stroke, and I'm going to give it some uh, arbitrary color, and I'm going to say arc, and I'm going to give it exactly these same values, and I'm going to say 0 to 360. 0 to 360, which means draw the whole thing, the full circle, from 0 all the way to 360 degrees. The problem is I want to think of degrees here. I've talked in other videos about degrees versus radians, a different unit of measurements. It's an interesting topic, but it's easier for me right now, I think, to just say angle mode degrees so that the unit of measurement that I'm using in the arc function is degrees. And if I run this, we see the circle turn pink, but it didn't actually turn pink, right? If I make the stroke weight of this 8, Whoops. Oh, and the stroke weight of this one, 4. We can see the pink arc inside of the white one. And I could say with the arc, like, let me only have 180 degrees, half of that. And you can see that it's drawing that inside, the, uh, um, that it's drawing that inside only 180 degrees. And what I could do is I could say uh, let end equals map the mouse x location, which goes between 0 and width, between 0 and 360 degrees. And I could say end here. So you can see as I move the mouse, and this is a little, I'm going to, I want to do this the, um, in, in kind of like the other way around, actually. I don't, this is a little bit weird. <laughs> this makes no sense what I'm doing. I'm going to get rid of <laughs> that one. Right? You can see this is me drawing that full arc. So going from 0 all the way to 360 degrees. And by the way, there are varying ways I can fill in the arc. Like I'm, at this point, I probably just want to say no fill. And it's just going to do this. But if I wanted to keep that fill there, I could say pi, which is like filling it like a pi chart. Right? You can see that. I can say open which is filling it like this, not as a pi, but straight across without connecting the stroke. Or I can actually say chord, which is filling it like open, but by connecting the stroke. So that's a small detail, but it's interesting to see how that works with arc, kind of useful. Uh, I don't care about any of that because I want to say no fill. So what I want to do now is instead of, um, instead of just mapping this arc's location to the mouse, I want to say, uh, map the number of seconds, which goes between 0 and 60, to between 0 and 360. And look at that. There's my clock with the number of seconds. Now I want to uh, let me do the same thing again. Uh, and 1 and 2, and I could be more thoughtful about this. Let me map the number of minutes that also goes between 0 and 360, but I'm going to have it be, um, you know, 280. So a little smaller, and N2. So there's the number of minutes, 
right? And as soon as seconds gets all the way to 60, this should go one more. Come on, get to 60, here we go. There we go, minutes went up by one. And now I'm gonna do the very last one. And three between, uh, for hour, an hour goes from zero to 24. And I could give some different colors here to also, you know, again, I'm not being very thoughtful about the design. Um, that's what I'm hoping you who are watching this video are much more creative than me. Um, but I can now see, and I actually want this one to be instead of 280, let's say 260. And now we can see I have uh, the number of seconds, the number of minutes, and then the hour. But this isn't right, right? Because what if, what if I want these to actually point to um, where the, the, you know, what's right, what's wrong? The point is to make a kind of creative clock that you wouldn't normally imagine seeing. But um, what, I, what, I, what I would like to do here, however, is actually have these position in the correct place in the sense of like if it were three o'clock, the arc would go from the top all the way to there. So let's think about the time. The time that I'm recording this right now is approximately 6.15 p.m. So the hours should go all the way to the bottom. Uh, and so the hours, uh, six o'clock, oh no, but it's 24 hour clock. Oh, it's a 24 hour clock. Let me just do the <laughs> minutes and the seconds and I'll think about, it. no, I can do it, I can do it. Let's do it, let's do it. So one thing I could do is say, actually the hours don't go between zero and 24, they go between zero and 12. And I just say modulus uh, 12. So it'll restart once it gets to 12 and 13 will become one o'clock again. So that, we can see now this is being the hours, but it's off. What I really want to do is have that range not go from zero to 360, but I want to start at negative 90 degrees, right? So this is confusing because rotation happens counterclockwise. So if this is zero degrees, I want to start up here at negative 90, or I could also think of that as uh, 270, right? And I want to go from that all the way to, um, itself. So me, I am so me in the chat just said, well, why don't instead of, I could just rotate everything. Something interesting actually about in P5 is zero degrees. When you, when you put the end at zero, it actually will draw you the entire thing. And it's sort of debatable whether that's a good or bad idea, but mostly it confuses people if it doesn't do that. So that's why it does that in P5. But let's come back here. So there's a couple things I could do. Number one is I could just um, translate to the center. So I could use, and I have a whole video now about transformations that you could watch. So I could just translate to 200, 200, and I could draw all these at zero, zero. So this I think will be a nicer, easier way to deal with this. And I can then just say, uh, rotate, I think negative 90. So there we go. So now we can see I'm coming up on finishing 60 seconds, and here we go. And it starts over again. Now, but I, and, and you can see, so now it is si five, that's not six. The green should be at six. Oh, you know why? So somebody else, uh, Maxwell in the chat is telling me zero to 59. So this is a problem I did, which the mapping should actually be, right, from zero to 59 minutes, seconds, zero to 59 minutes, and then zero to, um, Right, because we don't get 12. We get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12 again. So 0 to 11. And this shouldn't say, oh, I also messed this up. This shouldn't say, uh, right, so let me, oh, no, 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 12 was right there. There we go. Did I, did I get it right with the minutes? Should be, it should be 0 to 59. 12 is fine with the modulus because it's going back to, right, let's see. Zero, one. Oh, no. So th this is kind of hard to think about, but it actually should be zero to 60 because 59 seconds does not end at the top. It ends a little bit before. That's why this should be zero to 12 and modulus 12. So I did this a few different ways, but it is interesting to think about it, but these are subtle little points, but these should actually be 60. And now we've got the clock. 
So, I mean, again, I'm not suggesting this is a beautiful or interesting or wonderful clock in any way whatsoever. What I'm doing is showing you that you can get the time information and you can map it to some kind of design system. This is a tried and true kind of interesting uh, exercise. You, you can actually do this without knowing a lot about programming. If you know just how to draw shapes and how to manipulate numbers, that's really all you need for this. The second, the hour, and the minute function. So, you know, this, this coding challenge was about to end and I actually just wrapped up, but I'm gonna keep going actually because there's a lively discussion in the chat. Let's just sort of, I, I don't know, I, what I probably should have done is just make a literal clock with minute, second, and uh, hour hands. Let's do that for a second. Let's actually put those lines there and see if this kind of maps with what we think it should be. So I am going to, in addition to drawing these arcs, I'm going to draw a line I'm just going to do the uh, second hand for a second, from 0, 0 to uh, 100, comma 0. And I'm going to give it a stroke of 255. So I'm drawing this line straight up. Now I want that line to rotate according to that end angle. And I'm going to need to put push and pop around it because that rotation should only affect that line, not the arcs. So now we can see that is the actual second hand. And while I'm letting that run for a little bit, I'm going to, and I'm just going to put these at the end. I should put this like, I should, this should be called, I'm really second angle. Oh shoot. I just lost my copy paste. So I'm going to do this here. So this should be called, um, this should be called second angle if I'm being wordier about this. This should be called minute angle. And this should be called hour angle. If I want to be a bit more thoughtful. Second angle, um, minute angle. And now what I'm going to do is make these lines. And I'm going to do a second angle. And I'm going to do a minute angle and hour angle. And I'll make the minute 75 and the hour 50. And here we go. So again, I could be, this is right now, right? It is now, well, okay, I need these to be different colors. Because that, that doesn't look right. Um, all right, let's see, minute angle. <laughs> The number of minutes. Let's make this, uh, let's use the same colors. I don't know why I put it down there now. This is silly of me to separate these things. That's the minute angle. This is the hour. Oh, whoops. This is the hour color and this is the second color. I should draw a point in the middle. That would be helpful. Uh, and then let's also at the end just say stroke 255 point zero zero. So there should be a nice little dot in the middle. There we go. So yeah, this is the minute looks wrong. Zero. What did I miss here? Oh, I forgot. Ah, look at this. Horrible typo. I'm staring at it. I should never do coding challenges after hours and hours of live streaming. This I'm like at like three and a half hours of live streaming. <laughs> I just lost the word math there by accident. There we go. Oh, this was terrible. This is our clock. Oh, it makes me happy. That is actually kind of a nice looking clock. And I don't know why I got distracted by this arc thing. If I were to just comment out the arcs just for a second here. This is the basic idea. Oops. This is the basic idea of making a clock. So I have now made a clock in P5 in JavaScript, but the point of me showing you the arc, and again, it was not very creative, it was not very exciting, that you can now take this basic idea of the code or, and reading um, seconds, minutes, and hours from the P5 functions and drawing to your heart's content the most creative, strange way. Look at the John Maida clocks. Look at, um, there's an, uh, the lecture by Golan Levin that I will include as a link in this video's description. Um, and look at the, uh, some of the clock examples from Alka and other users that I'll also link uh, from CodePen. And hold on. So 
I want to check. I don't know if one thing that I think could be an interesting project is porting all of John Maida's original uh, clocks from the 12 o'clock series, if this is an allowed thing to do, uh, to a P5GS to like allow those projects to live on uh, and uh, for people to see them in the browser. They're beautiful and interesting experiments. So um, thanks for everyone for tuning into this coding challenge. I can't wait to see all the clocks that people make. Uh, I will create a GitHub page where you can submit them and there'll be a link to that um, in the um, video's description. But you can also uh, tweet me at Schiffman with your clocks or uh, just write them in the comments and I'll see them that way. Thanks for watching.